scarcity mindset makes you believe you need to do more to secure your future. If every time someone says that there's another way, your next thought is it's too good to be true. This is really, I think, showing a symptom of scarcity mindset. Patrice Washington, and this is the Redefining Wealth Podcast, where authenticity leads to alignment and abundance. Join us each week as we peel back the layers on what wealth truly means and dive into conversations that inspire, connect, and empower you to live your richest life. Get ready to challenge the status quo. It's time to redefine wealth for yourself. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Redefining Wealth. I am so excited to be in a brand new month. We are almost halfway through the year. What in the world? It's the beginning of June, you guys. I've already been seeing people say we're at the halfway mark. Technically, we're not, you guys. We have to get to the end of the month. July 1st (laughs) is what begins our second six months of 2024. But man, does time fly. And I think it's so funny that I'm even saying that because what it sounds like then is we don't have enough time. And this episode is all about how to spot scarcity mindset in your everyday life and your decisions and how to take it and transform it to abundance. And I've been working more and more in a one-to-one mentorship capacity. And it's been really eye-opening for me to see how many high-earning women still struggle with so much scarcity mindset, self-included, which is why I have a coach. And by the way, my private mentorship, I found a new way to help you assess whether one-on-one coaching with me would be the right fit for you. And if so, which one of my three options might work? So if you want to check it out, go to patricewashington.com slash mentor. That's patricewashington.com slash mentor. And just follow the prompts. It's a really cool assessment and it'll give you what I would probably say to you if I kept talking to all of you in DMs. So (laughs) I hope it helps. But when we dive into this episode, I really want to make sure that even if you're a high income earner, you don't skip this. This is not about being scarce in terms of just money. This is for you, even if you're making six, multiple six or seven figures, because I can tell you from personal experience, I find ways to still with all of the self-work that I do, with all of the coaching I provide and all of the coaching I still receive, I still find myself slipping into moments of scarcity. I could be triggered by an event. There could be some type of verbal influence. There can be something that just reminds me of a former time in my life. I just shared a private letter, a personal letter that I wrote with you guys earlier this week about having to talk to my 2007, 2008 self because she was roaring her ugly head up. And I was like, well, not ugly. Let me not call her ugly. You were cute girl. But she was just coming to the forefront. And I had to remind her that I got it. And the reason that I have it is because of the self-work. It is because of the soul work. And what might take years of trying to struggle through a scarcity mindset in some area of my life, now is days, hours. I'm grateful that the time is reducing and I'm really grateful that I get to help others in doing that. But I'm just saying, even if you're a high earner, don't think that you're above it. None of us are above it because many of us just have thought patterns and behaviors that came from childhood And they're deeply ingrained and we are constantly doing our work to move forward. So once I get through the affirmation of the week, I'm going to dive into how to spot scarcity mindset and your decision making and then take it and transform it to abundance. This week's affirmation is I am ready for abundance. I affirm my readiness to receive and embrace abundance in every aspect of my life. 
I let go of any limiting beliefs and open myself to the endless possibilities that surround me. My heart, my soul, and my mind are aligned with the frequency of overflowing prosperity, financial success, and unshakable joy. I trust that my creator is the ultimate supplier of all I need to thrive and supports my journey to discovering how I can create the experience of abundance no matter what I see with my physical eyes. With gratitude and confidence, I step into a life of abundance, knowing that I am deserving of all the good things coming my way. Declare with me today, I am ready for abundance. All right, let's dive in. So recognizing if you have a scarcity mindset definitely involves just being aware of, like I said, certain thought patterns and behaviors, beliefs that just suggest that you view resources like time, money, or opportunities as limited. And so last month we were talking about pivoting purposefully and just understanding that what worked for us in one season of our life may just not be the thing that can serve us in this season. And I talk a lot about being willing to lose. In the Redefining Wealth app, this comes up over and over again as I'm coaching in the Institute for Redefining Wealth. Being willing to lose is like the staple in my life right now. It is this idea that I don't have to be attached to anything. And the less attached I am to anything, the more I can have everything that I desire. But whenever you're attached, it means you're not, going to be radically honest. You're not going to tell the truth. And one of the things that I constantly come back to that I have to be willing to lose is any scarcity mindset that I have in regards to anything. And so I'm going to share with you by pillar, because you know, that's how my mind works. I'm going to share with you by the six pillars of wealth, what scarcity mindset can look like, because I want you to be aware of how subtle it is And I want you to also see that sometimes the same line of thinking or decision-making or behavior in another pillar is technically what you're doing in the money pillar. You just don't recognize it yet. And this is why this podcast exists. This is why my community exists. I need you to understand that wealth is not just money and material possessions. The original definition of wealth is what? the condition of well-being. And this podcast is about looking at all the parts of your life that are impacting your finances, even when you're not thinking about it. And so everything that I'm going to say, even though I'm laying it out by pillar, I want you to really consider it as we go through and think about how it could also be showing up in your financial life. Okay, so that's your homework as you listen. So here's the first one. Scarcity mindset shows up In the fit pillar, like negative self-talk. If you often think or speak negatively about your abilities, your chances for success, your ideas, your dreams, your thoughts, what's available to you, this negativity can definitely be a symptom of scarcity mindset. So what it is saying is that while you know all of those things, are available, you don't think they're available to you. You know that promotions happen for people every day, but for some reason you create a story over and over again about why it's not available to you. You know that people get degrees every day, but you create a reason why it's not available to you. And oh my gosh, we are so good. So we'll start with our negative self-talk and then we'll look for things to confirm that what we're saying is true. It's confirmation bias. So we'll look for experiences, for conversations, for anything around that'll confirm that. Well, that means your mindset is not being used to actually support anything that you say you truly want or desire. So that's a scarcity mindset. What I've been finding more recently is people will use this scarcity mindset in the fit pillar to neglect self-care. They'll always prioritize other tasks or responsibilities over taking care of themselves. So this is why, oh, I can't make time to work out. I can't make time to move my body, even though you've heard, oh, just take 10 minutes and go for a walk or 
park further away so that you have to walk further to the door or take the stairs instead of the elevator, no matter what it is, you will try to confirm why that is not available to you, why it is not a practice that you can adopt, even though you see people doing it all around. But that negative self-talk turns into you not even feeling like you're worthy of it. And then romanticizing, rationalizing, intellectualizing why it is okay and acceptable to neglect your own self-care. Another way that this shows up in the fit pillar is just this inability to rest and an inability to take time to recover because you're continuously pushing yourself to work harder and harder and harder, thinking that that's the key to more money or more significance or more success while also knowing that you've been doing that for a while and it hasn't gotten you anywhere. But scarcity mindset makes you believe you need to do more to secure your future. So that when you hear people on this show or other shows say things like, you can accomplish more with less, that scarcity mindset says, "Uh uh-uh, that's not for us, that's not for me, it's not possible, they're just talking, they're lying, they're hiding something. If every time someone says that there's another way, your next thought is it's too good to be true, this is really, I think, showing a symptom of scarcity mindset. The next pillar is people pillar. It's about creating relationships that matter. And I believe scarcity mindset shows up so much in the people pillar in the form of comparing yourself with others. So when you're frequently looking to the left and looking to the right, trying to see what everyone else is doing before you take a next step, And then you start comparing yourself to others. You might be at the 2.0 version of your business, but you're comparing yourself to people who are at the 10.0 version. And then going through that cycle of beating yourself up or back to negative self-talk, I should be doing more, I should be further along. But you're actually possibly not even doing the things yet. You're just talking yourself in and out and then letting envy or jealousy or resentment creep in. And that's just keeping you distracted from what you're supposed to do. And this is scarcity mindset because it usually stems from this idea that there isn't enough success or resources to go around. Back to fit pillar, it also could be that you don't feel like you can authentically be yourself and just do the things that you want to do, how you want to do it, and that it is enough. Well, you already see how these two impact your finances, right? Because if you're leaning into scarcity mindset in any one of these, it's keeping you from showing up authentically. It's probably keeping you from showing up consistently. And it's keeping you from showing up powerfully so that you can attract the people that you're called to serve. Let me share a powerful story with you. When Abraham Lincoln was facing one of the most crucial decisions of his presidency during the Civil War, he sought clarity through deep focus and reflection. He invited a friend of his, Leonard Sweat, to sit with him for hours as he wrestled back and forth with the decision to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. It wasn't that Lincoln really needed Sweat to make his decision. He simply needed someone he trusted and someone he believed was solid enough to hold space so he could concentrate and find absolute clarity within himself. Similarly, I believe that my purpose in this season is to hold space for brilliant women who know purpose has evolved, but they need a solid thinking partner to bring it all together. With my VIP private intensive mentorship day, you'll get to give yourself permission to immerse yourself in focused attention and guidance. Whether I come to your community or you join me here in Atlanta, we will spend an entire day mapping out the exact next steps you need to take to live out your purpose fully. With post-VIP day access to one-on-one support via the Redefining Wealth app, you'll have ongoing guidance and accountability. But space is limited, so if you're ready to scale joy and make this summer your most transformative season yet, I want you to apply now. Go to patricewashington.com slash VIP. That's patricewashington.com slash VIP. And let's see if we're a fit, because I believe your purpose is waiting and my purpose is to serve Another way I just want to address too, that scarcity mindset shows up in the people pillar. I believe that it is why many of us stay in dysfunctional relationships longer than we should. 
I don't think any of us should be in dysfunctional relationships, but that when we discover the dysfunction, we don't do anything about it because we think that love is scarce. Because we may think, who else will want me? What else could I ever do? If this person that I have been in relationship with and been loyal to and done all these things for all these years, didn't love me, wouldn't treat me right, wouldn't get it together, then who would want me now? And I'm speaking to women primarily here, right? Now that I'm older, I may have children. I may have all these other things going on with me. Who would want me now? Let me just hold on to the dysfunctional relationship because my scarcity brain is saying, who else will ever love you? I just wanted to call that out and say, there is definitely someone else who will want you, love you, care for you, deeply desire you, nurture you, encourage you, support you. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I can say that now because I'm experiencing that now. And it is, I say this over and over again, it's like one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced in my life. And looking back, I could see my scarcity mindset. I read my own journals. I read, you know, my prayer journals from years ago. And I could see where I was very clear about the type of love that I desired and thought that I deserved. But scarcity mindset was still telling me that it just wasn't available and I needed to stay put. And I needed to keep praying and hoping and wishing and fasting and reading all the books and doing all the things. But ultimately, as I moved into an abundant mindset, it gave me the courage to believe that there would still be love available for me. And even to say there will still be love, it's so interesting to think how scarcity mindset will train you to believe that dysfunctional love is love. For some of us, it's survival, it's codependency, it's an attachment to the familiar. But when you really think about it, is it the type of love that you really want and that you would have really dreamed up for yourself? Probably not. Probably not, but let me keep going. Next pillar, space pillar, scarcity mindset shows up like, I'm sure you guessed it, hoarding. Hoarding. So accumulating and holding on to items that you don't need or don't use, even when it's causing clutter, really indicates a fear of not having enough in the future. And I have seen people accumulate all types of things. It could be food, it could be clothes. I've even seen people who hoarded money because they were constantly thinking about tomorrow. And I'm not saying that we don't plan for the future, you guys, but this fear-based way of planning is not supportive. It's not healthy. And scarcity mindset does show up in hoarding. That reluctancy to throw things away. If you find yourself having difficulty in just letting go of items, even if they're broken, they're no longer useful, They're just maybe something that was passed down to you. And I'm not saying like necessarily like a family heirloom. I'm saying sometimes when someone passes in the family, you just get the stuff. Some of you have gotten storage units full of stuff. And now it's just overwhelming and and consuming you. But scarcity mindset says, well, if I do away with it, then I've done something wrong. But what if you would, Do something right for yourself by freeing up that mental space. And I know that's easier said than done. This is why in the programs, I'm always suggesting that as you do your personal development and spiritual growth work, you also make sure that you have a trained professional in your corner, a therapist, a psychotherapist, someone who can help you. But overstocking supplies, just consistently buying and storing excessive amounts of stuff like household items, cleaning supplies, toiletries, beyond what is just reasonably necessary is a sign of scarcity mindset. Now, in the faith pillar, I kind of struggled with this one, honestly, but what came to me in the faith pillar, I think that scarcity mindset can show up like FOMO. It's like this strong fear of missing out. Fear of missing out is what FOMO stands for. And this idea that you can miss out on an opportunity or an experience, I think could be a sign of scarcity mindset. This idea that if you don't take advantage of something right away, you'll never get the chance again. To me, 
it seems like a lack of faith because I really believe that if something is for you, how can it miss you? So if your scarcity mindset has you thinking that everything has to be now, now, now and rushed, 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 then I would consider that scarcity, yes, but definitely more of a faith thing because my faith has taught me that everything is in divine time. And so I never feel like I can miss an opportunity. Now I may have to pay more for the opportunity the next time it comes around. But even if that's the case, it may still be the more aligned and divine time for me. And so I'd rather pay more later and know that I can fully step into and take full advantage of something than have fear of missing out, rush into something. It's not really my time. And then I'm not positioned to get the best out of it. So that's how scarcity mindset occurs to me in the faith pillar. In the work pillar, scarcity mindset looks like perfectionism and again, overworking. So just feeling like you have to be perfect before you could do anything is scarcity mindset. It's this idea that not only are your gifts and your presentation not enough, it also comes from the idea that opportunities are limited, clients are limited, work is limited, everything is limited. And I know that if you're in an industry that is struggling or suffering right now, even in the personal development space, it's definitely different than it was just two, three, four years ago, right? But scarcity mindset has you focused on what you perceive to be a problem as opposed to allowing you to think bigger about what possibilities are now available. It's like technology is always growing. There are always new ways to leverage our gifts, our skills, our talents, our experience. And scarcity mindset will have you overworking in the wrong ministry, in the wrong place, exhausting yourself instead of seeing all the possibilities that are before you. That's what abundant thinking does. It allows you to take the same mix of individual items, again, the gifts, the skills, the talents, and come up with a new formula for what's possible instead of just looking at it all and going, ah, this is a problem. Nothing is going on. Going back to the negative self-talk and just starting that loop. The idea that you have to be perfect or that you have to keep working excessively hard, even when something does not feel aligned or doesn't feel good, is definitely scarcity mindset. Are you ready to transform your life and redefine what wealth means to you? Then join us at Redefining Wealth Live October 7th and 8th for an experience like no other. This isn't just another business conference filled with endless how-tos and to-dos. It's a vibrant community of spirit-led, like-hearted women coming together to awaken, redefine, and actualize wealth in every area of our lives. Redefining Wealth Live is designed to help you shift from autopilot to authenticity. Imagine leaving an event not just inspired but truly changed in our deeply connected community we do more than talk we collaborate we apply actionable insights and we share transformative experience to help us all develop practical follow-through strategies that are unique to us you'll experience a new level of connection clarity and confidence to finally bring your vision to fruition this is the room you need to be in for real life transformation don't miss your chance to elevate to your next level of purpose Redefining Wealth Live will help you define and make peace with your truth, not external definitions that have been handed down to you. Visit RedefiningWealthLive.com to secure your spot today. And when you do, we'll begin the transformation immediately because you'll get access to our bonus co-created connection calls happening each month through October. This is your time. Transform your life by awakening, redefining, and actualizing what true wealth means to you. I hope to see you there. Just visit RedefiningWealthLive.com. That's RedefiningWealthLive.com. And then in the money pillar, oh my gosh, I see this in so many ways. (laughs) So many ways. If you're constantly worried about finances, so you frequently stress out about money, even when you make good money, even when you have enough to meet your needs, that indicates a scarcity mindset. So obsessing over savings, always fearing unexpected expenses, even when it's irrational, 
or just feeling anxious about financial security. So you're so anxious about future financial security that you won't even live a life you enjoy today. You won't allow yourself to participate in things that would be healing for you and things that would feel nurturing for you. It's like you don't even make the connection yet that those things are also a part of how you prosper. Nurturing yourself, your soul, your relationships, your body, all of that is a part of how you continue to become the best possible version of yourself. And that's the version of you that attracts and then maintains and manages money more wisely. But when you look at it from the lens of scarcity, it's never enough. You're constantly in despair, no matter what you make. It's like you get a raise and then within months, it's like the raise made no difference. And it's a really vicious cycle. And then I see it turn into a reluctancy to spend on anything, even things that you really do need. Even when you need certain healthcare things or things for your children or something that is really important. I've seen it mostly with people foregoing healthcare needs. Even when they have the money, they won't have the surgery or they won't, but that goes back to the time scarcity. Do you see how it's all a vicious loop? It really is. And I just wanted to share, I wanted to get you thinking this month about where you may be showing up in scarcity because I guarantee you there's a connection to your finances Recognizing the patterns is the first step, right? Towards shifting from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. So I wanted to give you a practical exercise to support you if you felt anything coming up. And then next week, I'm going to go through 10 abundance principles that I personally use that have transformed my life. But I wanted to get your wheels turning. So think about this in terms of the pillars. Where might you be showing up in a bit of scarcity, And then how can we start to transform that to abundance? Here are the three things I want you to think about over this next week before you listen to the next episode. Number one, what would you love? In each pillar, I want you to identify one to three things that you would love. No thinking about what's practical. That's not what I asked you. All I asked you is what would you love? If you started to already hem and haw about, I mean, what is that supposed to do? Negative self-talk. You're at the fit pillar. And you're already operating from scarcity mindset. We're moving into abundance. So in an abundant space, an abundant mind, an abundant heart who understands that there is more than I need. There is more available to me. I live in an infinite universe. And if you have some type of faith practice and you serve a big God, so many possibilities this is not about you being practical. This is about you using your the God-given gift of imagination and dreaming and just say what you would love. What would you love in your fit pillar? Maybe it's, I would love to talk nicely to myself. That's one of my favorite Tony Jones songs. It's talk nice to me. What would you love in each one of the pillars? The second question, what are you willing to lose? What are you willing to lose? What are you willing to detach from? What about these beliefs? that may have come up for you as we talk about scarcity, which one of those would you be willing to lose? I'm willing to let go of the idea that my health care is not as important as my children's health care. That would be an example of something you were willing to lose based on the scarcity you may have identified. And then three, is there a small step you can take based on what you know, what you want, and where you are now? based on what you know, what you want, and where you are now. Is there any next step I could take? For the person who maybe your scarcity mindset was telling you that you had to prioritize everyone else's healthcare over yours and you just need to toughen up and deal with it, are you willing to lose that mindset? So you would go through that. I would love to have optimal health and take care of myself, okay? I'm willing to lose the scarcity mindset that I can't do that. It's not available to me. And what's a small step I could take? Reaching out to my doctor and making a consultation appointment. Those three steps. And I want to see what happens. If you just humored me, if you just humored me, 
You can come into the Redefining Wealth app and tell me how it goes. This episode will be posted in the main feed of the app. You know, the Redefining Wealth app is totally free. Download it on your iOS or Android device or on your browser at redefiningwealth.app. When you see this episode, I will post these questions along with it and think about it and then come and share. We are such a safe, aligned space. And I'm so proud of how brave over 1,600 people are who are currently in the app to be working through these things, whether they're just sharing with me in the DM or in the Institute, people can post and share more freely than in the main general feed. But still, the way that you guys show up in the comments and then support and comment to help each other is such a blessing. And so that's where we're starting for this month. And then we'll continue to unpack. So next week, I'm going to share abundance principles that have transformed my life in every one of the pillars. So good. I know it's going to be a blessing. So come back for that and share this episode with anyone that you think may need it. Anyone who you feel like is in the loop of dealing with scarcity mindset and needs a breakthrough. I am really looking forward to miracles this month. And I'm so excited to do it with you. So until next week... I want you to rate and review the podcast (laughs) because that'll help us out so, so much. Find other purpose chasers like you. I want you to do your homework, share this episode, and then come back next week. But until then, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. I'll talk to you later. Later.